Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of Blackbird's Brew. Happy Tuesday and welcome once again to Pagan Problems. This week's theme is about how we can make use of winter's quiet. The whole earth is resting during winter and so should we. It was uh, Gandhi who once said that uh, there was more to life than merely increasing its speed and how true that is. Our society is moving at a million miles a minute and everybody's expected to keep up as if somehow that is the purpose of life. It simply isn't true. The consequence of this is that a great deal of time, energy, and resources get absolutely wasted on activities that don't amount to a hill of beans, don't make us happy, and don't enrich our lives. So it requires a backbone to reject the idea that we need to go through life this breakneck speed at all times, because there's plenty of pressure coming from many quarters that say, oh yes, that's what you should be doing. But I think it's worth evaluating what exactly we're getting out of compliance with this idea if we're getting anything out of it at all, and then to make our decision for ourselves about whether or not it's worth it, whether or not this is serving our lives, whether or not uh, this is actually attending to our needs, or if this is just about distraction. I think that uh, rest is different from laziness, and I think that's usually one of the first attacks when we do divorce ourselves from that breakneck pace. Uh, but rest is, rest is how energy is recouped. Uh, winter does this for the earth. Uh, sleep does this for us, as well as not uh, us pushing ourselves too hard when there's just really no need and it doesn't really accomplish anything. But by contrast, laziness is not bothering to get up and do what we know we ought to be doing. Laziness is the neglect of duty, whereas rest is what enables us to have the ability to carry out our responsibilities as well as just live our lives. Rest is also different from stagnation. Rest is giving us the energy that we need to grow and evolve, uh, the energy to investigate, try new things, take on new projects. But stagnation is decay, decay of the body, decay of the mind, decay of the spirit. So allowing ourselves to rest is actually going to prevent stagnation. Uh, so we won't be neglecting our needs and we will allow ourselves to slow down from time to time when it's appropriate. Uh, this is part of the rhythms of nature. It's part of uh, the rhythms of ourselves. It's this process is mirrored within our own uh, ups and downs with our energies. Another thing to consider is uh, simplification and getting out of the habit of thinking that we need to be constantly overstimulated. Uh, I think we are addicted to our machines and we need to have a different relationship with technology. And I'm not talking about the abandonment of technology. And this isn't even so much about how often we might use our various devices. It's the fact that how the technology is being used, of how the technology is becoming our master instead of being our servant. Technology is a tool, nothing more, nothing less. And I think our culture has made a huge mistake in treating it as if it's something more than a tool and elevating it to a status where it really doesn't belong. So using the, win the winter season to uh, detach ourselves if we need to, uh, from all of our devices and start treating these tools as things that should serve us rather than the other way around is actually a pretty good use of time. It's also a good opportunity to think about, uh, you know, for what purpose are we using social media and evaluate if uh, the, the way we're conducting ourselves there is actually serving that purpose or if it's time to do a little bit of examination and uh, rethinking on that front. I think we should also learn to stop seeking out stress. I think it's really difficult to strike a balance uh, when it comes to keeping track of current events. Because on the one hand, uh, just ignoring what's happening completely and sticking our heads in the sand is not going to help and it's not going to prevent harm from coming to us. But on the other side, uh, there's the other extreme of keeping track of every single little thing that occurs. And I think that would drive anyone stark raving mad. Uh, personally, I am more interested in assisting efforts of people who oppose tyranny in practical ways rather than having a fit of the vapors and high drama every time one of these authoritarians do something awful because they're doing awful things all day, every, all day long. And this happens every day. So I don't really feel the need to overanalyze why what they're doing is wrong. I understand that part. Uh, I see my job more so as opposing it you know, in the practical ways that I can, uh, helping others do the same, even if it's nothing more than just making videos like this saying uh, there are other people like-minded. We, we exist. We have not been silenced completely and we can band together and we can affect some good change that will be beneficial for everyone. I think that's a better way to focus. Um, 
And I think it's a lot less stress to focus more so on working the solutions because I don't need to examine the argument of the authoritarians. I know what their argument is. I've seen the historical record. I know good and well it's not going to be good for anybody, so I don't feel the need to debate the question. All I need to do is to be part of the solution in whatever ways that I can. Uh, however, in addition to uh, civilization stress, everyday kind of stresses can also plague our souls. And it isn't hard to uh, find ourselves overly complicating our daily routines and then getting upset when things don't go smoothly. So ask ourselves the question, are we doing things the hardest way possible for no particular reason? Uh, do we have unreasonable expectations of how much can get done and within a certain period of time? Uh, wouldn't, would it help if we took a deep breath and remind ourselves that things do not have to be perfect in order for them to be good or in order for them to be sufficient. Overthinking is also another classic example of seeking out stress, and it's addictive, which makes it so much worse, because we get tricked into the belief that uh, you know overthinking is actually essential for our survival. If we stop overthinking, we're not going to be okay. Uh, meditation is a wonderful tool to help us get gradually out of the habit of overthinking and to loosen its grip on our thought process. And another thing we can do is to let go of what we don't want or what we don't need, and uh, that can make life much more straightforward. And uh, don't worry, this isn't about minimalism. I'm not a minimalist. Uh, but as far as, as things go, uh, we can begin with physical objects, uh, even if we've decluttered uh, many times. Uh, Things eventually build back up, and it's you know comes a moment when we need to do some maintenance. And even small adjustments can actually make a great deal of difference to the energy of our homes and within ourselves. Simply rearranging the furniture uh, can do a lot to refresh the energy in a space. Uh, we can also ask ourselves, what tasks are we doing in our daily lives that are essential? What tasks are, you know, it's nice if it gets done? And then what tasks are just a drain on the time, and you're wondering why you ever agreed to do it to begin with? Uh, decluttering the demands on our time, so far as what is practical, can be even more of a relief than decluttering our physical surroundings. And uh, lastly, uh, decluttering what's going on inside our own heads is another way of letting go of what we don't need. And uh, in this particular case, I'm not referring to overthinking, as I was a moment ago. Uh, this is more about not filling our minds with things that don't matter, but are filled with uh, high drama and all of the chemical highs and yays that go along with that. I think it's one thing to be entertained, but it's another to get so absorbed in the general gossip of the world, and there's no escaping the tittle-tattle on social media. But we get so absorbed in that that we spend more time minding other people's business rather than attending to our own. Letting go of that cuts down a great deal on manufactured stress. It doesn't mean we've stopped caring about our fellow man. It doesn't mean that we've stopped, you know, engaging in the relationships in our lives. It just means that maybe we're not paying attention to what the Kardashians are doing. Maybe it doesn't matter. <laughs> maybe there is life outside of uh, the celebrity headlines. Just a thought. Another thing to consider is that uh, the busyness can be a distraction from our own inner voice and that we need to learn to embrace hearing that voice. Uh, sometimes we don't do this because we actually fear it. Uh, and if we do, we should be honest about why. Uh, if we are craving distraction, uh, is it because we're afraid of hearing what we don't want to hear from that inner voice? Are we avoiding feelings we've tried to suppress or from acknowledging truths that uh, may change our lives in ways that we're resistant to? In the end, we can fool some people some of the time, but uh, we never really fool ourselves. Not really. Sooner or later, we will have to come to terms with things we try to avoid. And honestly, it's better just to get that out of the way sooner. Uh, it could very well be that the process won't be as bad as we fear. The anxiety surrounding the thought of looking within uh, may actually be what stresses us out rather than the actual bad experiences or unpleasant memories that we might have within our psyche. Uh, but if we let go of the busyness and uh, make it a point to listen to our inner voice through meditation, through journaling, or through other means that uh, works for us, that can help us process our thoughts, our emotions, and our experiences in a healthier way. The inner voice can also be a source of protection. It can warn us uh, when we are getting dangerously close to that exhaustion and when we do need to slow down. Uh, if we don't listen, we just you know keep push, push, push up to a point, but past that point, things will begin shutting down. This could manifest as uh, not being able to concentrate on what you're doing, to having a lack of motivation, to having 
sleeping issues, or health issues. So if we react to the internal alarm bells provided by the inner voice, we can save ourselves a lot of trouble, especially if we're needing to catch our breath and uh, just slow down for a while. And if that means that uh, we take a nap on a free afternoon or say no when someone asks us to do something, then so be it. It's not going to be the end of the world, and doing this just might clear our heads. And it's only once we let ourselves be quiet that we're able to reevaluate our priorities and what we're doing. Winter is the time for reflection, and part of that reflection can be about what's necessary for our own self-care. I, I think that busy is distinct from being productive. Uh, busyness is just occupying time. It doesn't follow that anything useful has actually been accomplished. Uh, but by that same token, I think hard work is good for the soul. We're better off when we are accomplishing things. But if we're working away endlessly and we're not getting anywhere or nothing seems to result in much progress, then we need to take a step back and think about what we're doing. Were we being productive or were we just being busy? And ask ourselves, what's the benefit of the things we keep busy with? It's worth looking at the things we do and asking if those things deserve a place in our lives. And also asking what doing those things actually achieves. Can we identify the benefits and articulate them? And are those benefits worth it? Or are we doing something that actually demoralizes us? Does it overtax our energy reserves? Are we allowing something else to break us down? So eliminating uh, what that which isn't essential or that which does not bring us joy, that's going to result in a better use of our time. And it just might give us a little more downtime while we can rest, be cozy, and enjoy the quiet of winter. Spring, summer, and fall will be back here around before we know it. So let's take this moment while we can. Enjoy the sights of snow if they ever arrive. Just that nice, quiet, blank slate of the world. And relax. We'll be better off for it. Nature knows what's best. So uh, that's what I have to say on this topic. Uh, I hope you will come and join us for further discussion at Blackbirds Brew on Discord. There is a link to join in the description box below. But uh, in the meantime, please subscribe to this channel, leave a comment, like this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.